videoing? Yeah. Okay, this is the, um, very quickly, it's about La Boiselle. There we go. There is the actual plan of attack. Bird Corps. Plan of attack at La Boiselle. And this is a bit that concerns us. There's the village. There's the divisional boundary on that side. And there it is on this side. So our guys are in here basically a mile across. We've got some other footage that some of them um, matching going into attack either side of the village. Two big craters there. They're doing. They're doing. This was the left hand column. Two columns of troops out of four. Um, a little bit more. A whole heap of maps. But now we'll. You'll see what we're going to try and depict on the diorama. Troops coming in either side. Oh, it's better on this map. Troops coming in either side, either valley. And then on this side as well. Try and take this sausage readout or heligoland as it was known. And now we'll move to the diorama. Okay, we're back recording. And here's my diorama. From the British point of view. This is... The Papoum Road, coming from behind us, is Albert, and down there, up over the hill, up over the hill, will be um, Papoum Poziers first. So basically, the British start, we're in four columns, one column here, three battalions in it, another column here, Let's to another column here you can see it there that's the third one and then a fourth column over here so four columns three battalions each which is um, 800 men per battalion 2400 men in each column then with four columns but also there was the pioneer corps who were based at Beer Court Wood. Dun, 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 dun. Um, and they were also designated a fighting battalion for this day. Because they had to support all the others in the field. Um, as well as hold some roll. There's a bit of rum there. Soon run dry. Soon run dry. Um, and some stores, etc. We even got the compass there to show you which way the fight went and you can see we're heading northeast on the battlefield so we'll look at it per battalion per brigade the 102nd brigade which consisted of four Tyneside Scottish battalions two on the left two on the right we're going to pinch out the village and um, and the last one to Poiziers and Bapoum is a smelly bum. But as you can see, we didn't attack directly on the front because of um, the glory hole. So there was um, a C Company of the 18th Pioneers who were based in Baycourt Wood. It was their job to defend the front, which they did. So if you start with this column on the left, two tiny sized Scottish battalions. Left. Oh. Left the British trenches that were here. This is Keats Redan, so a British strong point. Um, so then the men left the trenches, went straight up the hill, up the valley. This Mash Valley. As you can see, left the trenches here, up over the open ground, stormed the Germans. The idea was, was to get in at the back of the village here and using bombers, as in grenade throwers, they would pinch out the village. British coming from that side as well. Would pinch out the village. Any leakage, any Germans escaping, would be met by the um, C Company. So this column on the left hand side achieved zippity doo dah. No at the end of business, no British were in this German trench system north of the Bapoum Road. That is YSAP. 
YSAP was the explosion to disorientate the Germans. Um, and then the back end of this column, the Tyneside Irish used to, um, were a supporting battalion for all four columns. The last battalion was them, the Tyneside Irish. Um, because they had to march down Tara and Usna Hill, so we're talking marching down here over a mile before you cross the British lines, over open ground again, over the German lines and into the German trenches. Needless to say, these battalions um, were annihilated. As soon as they come over the crest of the hill, each soldier represents 30 men. As soon as they come over the crest of the hill, they're in trouble. The Germans dropped carpet barrage right across the line that the men had to physically walk through. Um, another standing barrage on the terry, um, trenches. And there was also a third barrage out in no man's land closer to the German lines. Don't forget the Germans had had two years to mark out this whole bleeding place. He knew every square metre of it. Um, in the Germanic um, roles. Again, I try to depict maybe a bit over the top, but it's 20, this 120 meters goes down to 80 meters and climbs up again on the German side. What we try to also depict is that basically one in three of the British shells were duds. Got a few there's one. <laughs> There's one, I've, put, I've listed the battleground with a few. Oh, there's another one, I think. Just to uh, depict that. Um, very quickly, then, the other three columns. Similar things, starting up here. Oh, gosh. Oh, God, what are we doing? Irish one at the back. And then two Scottish British frontline trenches. And then. Two Scottish battalions going up, trying to break through. It was never going to happen. I think we knew that. There's the Lotnagar crater. Third column here. Tyneside Irish again at the back, slaughtered. Having to go through a standing barrage. Over the British lines. Up over no man's land. South east of the crater. And then basically into more of a killing zone. And try and break through there. Some number of individual men and groups, like all bands did, but nothing. And then this one again, just in front of Baycourt Wood, we've got the rear battalion of Irish over the British lines, which are being bombarded. And then with the two Royal Scottish, um, the 15th and 16th Royal Scots, who went ahead. But because of that German position there, the Heligoland being too strong, the Scottish went to the right, to the right. They went more east than northeast, which meant that position there, that German position at the back, was never taken. Um, not day one, anyway. A few more days after. The Heligoland sausage rigged out. Germans firing flares. Flares, that's what brought in the artillery. We're flying high up above here is Cecil Lewis and his marine signer. He flew over at half seven and gave a really vivid account um, in his book Sagittarius Rising of, um, of what he saw that day from 4,000 feet. His plane was actually shaken and rattled by the explosions which were came as high as he did. Mm. Cecil Lewis, you live again, kid. Mm. And then the German lines, we do credit to them, 110th Reserve Regiment from Baden, I think it's southwestern Germany. Um, two battalions in the front line, one in the intermediate lines, basically about 1800 men holding off 10,000. If you were in the front line, it's these German, it was these, um, these machine gun positions at the back of the village. 
which decimated the um, the British. The German gun control was such fire and precision is that they would fire at the troops immediately in front of them, but it was all disciplined enough that other machine gunners would concentrate on the troops, which were nearly a mile away on Tara and Usna Hill, the Irish. The village was fortified. From the, from the British point of view, it was just brick rubble. You can see it looks just a complete wasteland. But inside the cellars, and underground of all these buildings, because most of these old French buildings had cellars, um, the Germans had built. Da, da, da. You can just see in there, the Germans had built basically mini fortresses in each one of them, and it was going to take a winkle picker to get them out. Needless to say, the attack was a disaster. The artillery for seven days that had preceded it should have destroyed all the Germans, but. Da, da, da. As we can see, the Germans were in the shelter, you see there from their trenches, were in a shelter, in a bunkers, sometimes 30 feet below the ground. And, come on, see this bunker there, very quickly, just to show you, I'm not saying the Germans were having a laugh. Not saying the gym is running all off. But come on, put it down. Inside the bunker. First aid room on the left, mess room on the right. There's my first aid room. There's a mess room on the right. I know it's taking the mickey a bit by putting the Germans being so gay, but, um, and I mean that as in enjoying themselves. We've also got, we've also got a dash out there with a limp in homage to Blackadder. <laughs> anyway, that's me. I tried to do it in 10 minutes. It's made 12 and a half. Later.